Huh. Okay, so you are looking at the reason why I have not been uploading anything StarCraft 2 related or anything to my channel. As you can see, there are no graphics cards inside of this computer, which happens to be mine. I sold my graphics cards and got a GTX 570 to replace my two 460s. Uh, thinking about getting a second GTX 570 when they go on sale again, but I was only allowed to buy one. And only bought one for now. So, this card, apparently it doesn't go in that easily, which sucks. So, this will probably be a bit of fumbling. My GTX 460s, though, so they always snapped in super easily. It was awesome. But this card doesn't like that. Does not at all. There we go. I lied. It went in super easily this time. <laughs> I already tried putting it in once and it didn't go that easily. And one thing that's amazingly awesome is when you have a case that has thumb screws. I freaking love thumb screws. They make everything so much easier. Because it's quite annoying to have to deal with real screws and screwdrivers. So, now one of the important things when you are installing a anything, you want to make sure you're using proper grounding protection. So, as you can see, there is something on my wrist. That is a proper grounding device. So, I am grounded to the earth. And it's got a special resistor in here to make sure that no current comes back up and kills me. <laughs> so, very important though, you want to make sure it's firmly seated. Give it a good little push, make sure it's in there, or else there's a chance that things won't work. Now, let's see for power. My cable management for my last cards, well, the plugins were on the end here, not on this side. So, it's not going to be a cakewalk. But what I'm thinking is, ah, I have zip ties in the back. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these in for now, and then later on I will go and, oh, there we go. Just gave that one a little bit more length. There we go, I just snapped, broke the zip tie from wherever it was. Um, I'm assuming. So I'll just plug those ones in there, and then later I'll go back and check on cable management. And these two, I'll just leave them right here for now. They're not going to restrict the airflow too, too much by being there, because they're really close to the other ones. Uh, okay, this is weird. Still seems really empty only, even with this card being a giant card, <laughs> compared to my other ones. Can't wait to get a second one in there. Hopefully everything would fit properly. Doesn't look like it's left much room for a second car, that's going to be a tight squeeze. But, the GTX 560 does have this fan as recessed here to give it a little bit better airflow when you're working with SLI mode. So, there we go, I now have a graphics card. I'll show you the rest of my computer for fun if you want to look. We do have the massively large Scythe Mugen 2 CPU cooler. Uh, as you can see, many, many, many heatsink. Uh, fans, uh, you can't see in there, oh well. But, very, very massive tower of a heatsink. Quite inexpensive, quite good. Uh, 1000 watt power supply from Corsair. Got my solid state drive, as well as two 500 gigabytes hard drives in RAID. Oops, sorry, solid st state drives on the top there. And then the two 500 gigabyte drives in RAID 0. And then a Western Digital Velociraptor with 160 gigabytes or 150 formatted capacity. Side of my case has some nice fans, 200mm fan, a couple smaller ones, and there's a couple of top exhaust fans. And uh, you're not going to be able to see anything for a second. As I put my case panel back on and take off the silly str wrist strap because that's not something I really like wearing when I don't need to. I'm wondering if that noise is I'm just brushing some dust off of the outside of my case. There we go. I'll do up the rest of the thumb screws later. Plug in my graph, my monitor. And after I plug in my monitor, I have to plug in my power, because 
of course it was unplugged. And let's plug in the Ethernet. Hopefully I put in the right slot, because I do have one of them disabled in BIOS. So I could potentially be plugging into the wrong one and not having internet until I move it, but not a big deal. Very, very, very dusty. Anyways, as you can see, side panel is back on. Am I zoomed in? No, I can't change the zoom if I am. I don't think I am though, but we're going to hit the power button. Oh, forgot to turn on the monitor. And then we're going to do just some changes to the BIOS. So you don't have to really keep watching if you don't want to, but I just thought for anyone who's sort of curious what goes on inside the computers, you might be interested. So I'm going to go into my BIOS and change some settings. Uh, yeah. And we're just going to be doing... I already have an overclock for my computer that I know the settings for. Have it printed out nicely. Anyways, this is a Gigabyte BIOS, pretty basic. Uh, sorry that I can't hold this straight. Anyways, I'm going to go to Advanced Frequency Settings. My multiplier is times 19. My Advanced CPU Core Features, I'm going to disable Turbo Boost. Uh, the reason why I'm disabling this is just to keep it stable. Uh, I don't want it to jump to a higher voltage than or a higher clock speed ever with the voltages because I do a very low voltage um, and you want to set this if you're having any decent B clock you're going to want to set it to 36 times to make sure you don't oversaturate um, as I am going to be jumping this from 133 to 200 so and okay Let's see, I want to use 36, that doesn't seem right. Oh no, 17. 17 and 8. Yep, that is correct. 1600 megahertz for my memory now. Uh, what else do I change? PCI Express Frequency, leave it auto. Do not change your PCI Express Frequency unless you're doing a very, very high overclock. <laughs> leave that one alone. Uh, CPU clock drive, I did have that turned up a bit. Don't know if I actually need it, but it is turned up. Um, won't need to turn this one up. And that's all the settings I need to change on this page. But it won't boot with 